it is such an exciting joy today to be just in the complete spirit of celebration of who we are, of why we've come, of what we are as a soul group together here at Unity of Walnut Creek. And I told the first service I was... Um, I was hearing from spirit to take off my shoes in the first service, so I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but, and so I had them back on, I was ready to come back up, you know, one of my cuter pairs of shoes, and I heard it again, and this time I got the reason, because you are on sacred ground. Isn't it the truth, though, right? This is sacred ground. Really sacred ground. Do you feel that when you come here? I've had people tell me that they get out of their car, they drive up, they get out of their car, and it's like all is right and well with the world when they step onto this property. Yeah, several of you are nodding. And so it is that sense of knowing that this is a safe place. This is a place of love. This is a place where the divine is palpable, and we are reminded again and again of who we are. That's why we come, isn't it? I mean, we come for the fun, and we come for the connection, and we come for the spiritual growth, but ultimately we come because we want to be reminded of who we are. And who are we, anyway? <laughs> we are divine human beings. We are, we are at the essence. We are filled and infiltrated with that source that is all the things we've just celebrated, all the things we've just talked about, love and peace and joy. We are those qualities, in essence, in expression in the world. That's why we're here as individuals. That's why we're here as a community. On Friday, I had the great pleasure of officiating the renewal of vows for Carl and Carolyn Jansen. I don't know if they're here today. They're here? There they are. Fifty years. That's impressive. As Carl said, you know, big deal, a birthday, no big deal. But 50 years of marriage, that's commitment. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I could say about us. 50, 70 years, 50 years on this property, but 70 years of commitment, of dedication, of the founding, the lineage that we have here, of the essence that goes all the way back, of course, to the beginning of unity. It's rich. Our ancestry is rich, and we're going to dip in throughout the service and have some of those who have led the church here come in and share with us a blessing of well wishes or a message about unity of Walnut Creek. And so today's title is about roots and wings, as Marge said, connecting our history and, 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 and really catapulting us into the future from the strength of that foundation. So it was in that place on Friday where um, we renewed Carl and Carolyn's vows was, was at Samuel P. Taylor, the Redwood State Park. And it wasn't long ago that I was there on my own spiritual retreat and I was up on the trail, the Pioneer Trail, and I just had, you know, one of those experiences. You know those experiences, right? <laughs> and so it's hard to put into words when you have those experiences. I'll try to give you a little taste of it. But it was just, you know, I was there, the, the brook was babbling, the sun was, was beaming through and dappling through the forest, the, the redwoods were doing what redwoods do, you know, just, they just, you know? <laughs> it's just like, ain't nothing moving me, man. I am strong, majestic, tall, and I just skyward and deep into the earth, you know? There's just no, no pushing this guy over. <laughs> And so I'm there by one of those redwoods, and, and I'm getting drawn like, closer to the earth and closer to the earth. And it felt like, like spirit was like, asking me to be buried. You know? It was just like that. Like, I couldn't get deep enough. You know, I didn't bury myself, but I couldn't get you know, deep enough into the earth. It was just sort of a, you know, a vision, in a way, of, of, of being reborn, is what I realized. It's about rebirth. 
And so that rootedness can be that deep, that kind of experience of, of rebirth. Remember when Nicodemus came to, came to Jesus in the night. He came to Jesus in the night and he said, how do I get in the kingdom? And Jesus said, you must be re reborn. And he said, well, how? I can't re-enter my mother's womb. And Jesus is like how he always is. Okay, we're not really talking literally here. We're talking <laughs> spiritually. <laughs> Of course, the literalists have continued on a different, different <laughs> pathway. <laughs> but he says you must be reborn of water and spirit, of water and spirit. And that's really what we're talking about here. Earth and things, water and spirit, humanity and divinity. It's the wholeness of who we are. It's what we've come to be as that whole being. And so it's all sacred. It's all holy. The body, the earth, the physicality here, the, the carpet, the walls, you know, it's vibrating with life because it all comes from the source. And so everything is infused with the divinity, including us, all aspects of us. And so don't discard any part, <laughs> even the ego who gets a bad rap, you know? It's all, it's all part of who we are. It's all part of what we need. It's just kind of reprioritizing. It's just a little shifting around to see who's in, who's in the full charge and the leadership, and it's always spirit. That's always our aim, that that source, that spirit, that divine in us is in the lead, and the rest of us comes together in the wholeness to follow. And so it was in that redwood experience that I was so close to the earth and having this vision of being deep inside the earth and that kind of feeling of rootedness and starting over and rebirth and, and, and that energy of rebirth that I looked up and, you know, into those big branches that, that reach into the blue sky and on top of those branches, a raven that was beginning to spread its wings, you know? And so it is for us, too, that we are, there, those are, there are times when we have to go back to the source and refill and remember who we are and get resourced, if you will. And so we need to know when that is. That's the key, to be attuned to the subtleties and the nuances that says, okay, enough already, <laughs> enough out there, enough serving, enough giving, come back, refill, drink from the living waters again. And that's part of that rootedness. So, so when I ask you, where are your roots? There could be so many different answers, right? <laughs> like on what level are you talking about? Where are my roots? We often think when we say, where are your roots? We think of place, right? Of a place where we are from. Maybe it's a city or a town or a village or a country or where are your roots in that way? And of course, in spiritual terms, we mean that deeper level that I'm talking about. But there is also in the realm of our expression, the place, the physical place. And this is the physical place that we're talking about today too, isn't it? And so I want to walk you through a little bit of our history of this uh, physical place and what it once was um, when along came unity of Walnut Creek to find its home. You know, we were nomads for the first 20 years. I don't know if you knew that. So we come from, from great stock of, of nomadic roots and then <laughs> rootedness. <laughs> and so this building looked like that, um, a cottage yeah. on a goat farm. And you can just keep going through, Larry. So there's another shot of the cottage. There's our congregation pouring in or out. I'm not sure which. The internal space that sat 60-some people initially once some walls were knocked out. And there's the blessing of our spiritual home in the early years. So 50 years ago, um, about when this space was, was cleared up. And, um, and so it was a goat farm. Interesting, huh? I always like to look at the symbolism and the metaphysics and all of that. And so in Native American medicine, or I don't know if this comes to Native American indigenous, I'll say more generally, medicine, there are, um, you know, when an animal crosses your path or an animal comes into your purview, it's, it's a symbol for you. It can be a symbol for you. And so um, I looked up goats because I was curious <laughs> in looking at our roots. So what are goats about? And goats are, and I didn't really have to look it up because I'm a Capricorn, so I already know what a goat is. <laughs> we Capricorns, and you may be out here too, you know, it's like the whole group is up on the mountaintop celebrating the, the summit and the Capricorn's going, but what about that summit? <laughs> 
And so the goat is the, the sure-footed one. The goat is the confident one that, that is able to climb these, these pinnacles. And, and goats only need two inches of earth in order to climb to the next level. And so that's kind of a symbol that I think is worth looking at. You know, that, that sure-footedness, that confidence that has created all of this. A thriving community that continues to thrive. And, and bring in new energy and young people and new families and, and people who have been gone a long time come back and breathe in a, a breath of fresh air. And so there's that constant sense of circulation as, as we expand. Also, the goat is a good energy for if you're up on a ledge and you're stuck, the goat can help you out. So, um, so if we ever get, and I can't imagine we ever would, but if we ever felt like we were a little bit stuck on a ledge, we can call forth that, that energy that is part of the foundation of this sacred land. And so then our, our early years were also marked by um, several founding mothers and fathers. Our first, Marie Giles, who was our founder in 1948. And she served until 1970. And so we don't know a lot about Marie. Most of the folks here, was anybody here during Marie Giles' time? by chance? No. So we haven't found many. <laughs> um, and we don't have a lot of written history about her time, but we do know some basics about um, some things that were created at that time and then landed here. What we do know a lot about um, is the next minister, Carol Ruth Knox, who served here for many, many years, about 17, starting in 1970. And, um, and she really helped build and flourish this church. So it's the roots and the wings, you know? Marie provided the roots, and then once this church got established, um, Carol came in and provided the wings. And so, and I'm not saying like, the minister did it all, because Carol even specifically um, shares some of her vision. But I, before we go there, I want to share with you a couple of the people along the way that have wished us well. And so Max Lafsner is one of our ministers, very beloved minister. Um, he's not feeling well right now, so we send him prayers of health and wholeness, and um, he planned on sending a being here in person, and then that didn't work out, and then maybe a video, and then maybe a letter, and, and none of it worked out. So we, we're just presencing him here. Linda's going to share a bit about Max's years um, during our presentation this afternoon. And I think we have a talk of his that's playing out on the patio, so you'll get a chance to, to, to dip in a little bit more and, and get filled with some Max energy if you're missing Max. Um, but during Max's time, all the, the peace tiles, the peace wall was created, and so we give thanks for his his artistry that he brought, his real sense of love. And uh, David tells me he also loved to party. So, um, <laughs> so the love of partying and socializing is all a part of our, our, our great ancestry here. <laughs> And, um, and then uh, there, here's a nice warm message from Jean Lynch, who was one of the associates under uh, or with um, Max. Hi, my name is Jean Lynch. And I served as an associate minister at, at Unity of Walnut Creek from the years 2000 to 2002, almost three years. I worked with Reverend Max Lafser, and it was my first position as a Unity minister and a great one. I couldn't have landed in a better place because I was not only supported by Max, but embraced by the community and we had fun together and it was a really wonderful experience. And after Max left, I had the honor to serve as the interim minister and to welcome in Reverend David MacArthur, and he became a mentor to me as well. So happy birthday, Unity of Walnut Creek, and you are always in my heart. And now let's hear from Suzanne Leonard, who is also an associate minister with Max. Hi friends at Unity in Walnut Creek. I'm so thrilled that you're having a celebration. You deserve one. In the years that I served there as your associate minister, we had such a good time. I was able to help the youth learn about Unity principles, help with volunteers, and certainly my time to serve, serve with uh, Max Lafser and Jean Lynch were delightful. We called ourselves Lafser, Leonard, and Lynch 
<laughs> ministers or uh, maybe an attorney firm. We weren't quite sure. But I know that you're continuing to have good times there. And I congratulate you on continuing to be a beacon of light in Northern California, sharing the unity message. Hugs, kisses, and blessings always. This is your Reverend Suzanne, signing out. <laughs>I love that Suzanne touches on, I mean, she makes a joke about the, the attorney firm, but um, partnership, really. You know, she speaks to the idea of partnership. And it's not just, of course, among the ministers, but the leaders who are who? Who are the leaders here? That's right. You got it. Somebody was listening in the first service. <laughs> So, um, so one of the things that Carol Ruth Knox said on her very first Sunday, which was September 11th, actually, um, 1970, there were 66 attendees, and her very first sentence was, I am so scared. <laughs> she was right out of ministerial school. And I love that because it's, you know, it, it brings us back to that vulnerability, right? our willingness to be vulnerable, our willingness to be open-hearted, our willingness to be authentic with one another, one of our core values, to be real, to be real, to be real. Because when we are real, the, the, all the layers are peeled away, right? And we're just there, able to connect with each other in that very open kind of space, in that very the essence of who we are and that essence of our own souls and our own hearts then opens further to that essence that we all share that one same essence the divine the source the spirit and so in that message carol ruth knox it was called the wheel within the wheel and she talked about leadership and the importance that she not be the all-knowing mother speaking to the congregation in this sort of, you know, difference of power, but that it be a place of shared leadership. It was the only way that it would really grow and blossom is if there was a sense of shared leadership, if there was a sense of vitality within the congregation, an inner knowing of who we are that would then allow us to catapult into all that we are today. So I'm very grateful for that initial message and vision that, that Carol Ruth Knox held because it really is what grew us. And so I'm always surprised at the number over the years of working in ministry um, when I'll have people at the table who are in leadership roles and they'll say things like, well, I don't really consider myself a leader. Has anybody ever had that, that confusion? <laughs> Because I want to clear it up now, because every one of you is a leader. What is a leader? If not somebody who is on their spiritual path in a very earnest way, who is dedicated to their spiritual path, you wouldn't be sitting in these seats today if you weren't committed to the evolution of your soul and this community. And so by nature of the presence that we have today, you are a leader. So I want to invite you to turn to your neighbor and say, you are a leader here. It's, it's, always, a, it's always a risk I take at 11.30. <laughs> <laughs> but to know that, to really feel that, to take that into your heart, to know that as you walk the planet, as you move about this community, when you go to work or you do your volunteer work or you care for your children or your parents or you're, you're with grandparents, whatever it is that you are up to in the world, that you're carrying that spiritual authority with you. You don't need to be officially ordained to recognize your own spiritual authority. You were ordained from the moment you came into this world and have been rebirthed and reordained every so often. I mean, for all of us, different timings, but over and over again. As Paul said, I die daily. And maybe it's momently. I, now, I don't know. Things have speeded up, haven't they? 
And so moment by moment, really, we awaken, our consciousness becomes clearer. And there are times when things get cloudy. And what do we do at those times? We go back to our roots. We go back to our foundational principles. We get reminded again of what is unity? What do we believe? Oh, that's right. God is the source, the all loving good, the presence that is everywhere. And I am divine. I'm made of that. And so I am that in the world. And how do I make it so? Well, I think it and I feel it. I co-create it and I pray it into being. And then I live it. Those are our five principles. And so it's that simple to go back to those sort of foundational times or foundational committed practices. And all it takes is a pause, you know? All it takes is a moment, a breath, to get back into that well of prayer and reminder of who we are and what we're about. And so in those times where things are cloudy or confusing, that's what we do. And in the life of this church, there have been times, right? There have been great times of expansion. And as Carol Ruth Knox talked about, there were also times when things needed to go more inward. She talks about it in terms that are familiar to you that I use a lot of feminine and masculine, of of the sacred masculine and the divine feminine working together as one whole. And so expansive energy, that doing in the world, that serving in the world, that building of numbers and programs that this church went through under Carol, it came to a time where she felt and the church was feeling a little bit of a draw within. She said that the metaphysical became the mystical. She said the manifesting and the affirming became uh, the inward philosophy and intentionality, that there was a, a coming back to the roots And so it is with us in our own individual lives, isn't it? In our own families. There are times when things, you know, things get expanded, 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 and then we go, wow, wait, I'm getting tired. This isn't, you know, this isn't serving. And so it's time to land back, to come back to source, to come rooted again and be rebirthed once again. So it's, it's a, um, exciting to look at where we've been and to touch in over the years at, at, at where we have, have landed once again and re-nourished ourselves and re-stabilized our roots. You know, the, the root system of trees, it's, we think we're just looking at one tree and we're usually looking at a huge family community of trees because there's this whole thing that happens underneath the earth. There's a, a book out called The Hidden Life of Trees, but there's also scientists are now studying the consciousness and the intelligence of these root systems where plants and trees will communicate to each other that there's danger, there's an insect, and they'll let each other know that there's something that could cause harm. Or if there is something that they can actually together Uh, pull together and then release a toxin that will sabotage something that could be harmful, they'll do that together. Or the older trees will withhold from taking water knowing that there are younger saplings around them that need more of the water and the nutrient base. And there's all this going on under the ground where we walk. Isn't that amazing? And so it's like us, it's this rooted system, it's this interconnected place, and this is where we come back. How many people come back to unity after they've drifted? Well, they've drifted because life is going pretty well. <laughs> and then they come on back when, you know, it's time for retirement or a divorce or some difficulty transition that they're going through, right? Because it is a place of healing, because it is a place of love. That's the sacredness of the ground that we create of this sanctuary. Do you know that this is your soul group? Anybody ever say when they came to unity, I've come home? Yeah, and it's quite literal, you've come home. And so you re-enter your home and this here, even though the faces may change some over the years, it still is that basic soul group. You found your group, your place where the roots are intertwined, where we help each other out, where we support each other as one mighty forest, where we communicate to each other what we need to do and, and we give nutrients when we need to and we, and, we, and we take when we need to, right? We refill when we need to refill as well. So Carol Ruth Knox has a, a video. I'd like to, um, well, that's probably going to mess with your order. Can we skip over? Thank you. Um, 
so uh, she has this video of one of her talks where she's talking about this, this kind of idea. So let's take a look. The seed pod has a, has a shell around it. What's it doing? It's filling itself up. When it gains the strength, when it has enough of itself to protrude through, what happens? Nature, through its own support system, provides it with the strength so that what happens, the shell is cracked so that it can push through to create the next growth. That's you. No self can be given when it's weak. No self can serve the universe when it's coming from lack or need. You're a self. That moment when you want to lift up the window and say, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to put up with it anymore. That's a moment of dignity that says, I'm dried up. I need more of me. I need to pay attention to the pearl. And the guarantee built in, contrary to public opinion, the guarantee that's there, that allows you to have the courage to look like a fool in society's eyes, it's because you know a law of nature that says, as you fill the inner, the inner strengthens. So then, and then it can lose itself and return to give again. What to say? Nice, huh? We have a great lineage here. Yeah. And so as Carol was talking about that, I was really touched by that clip because it feels very much to me like where we are now. You know, that we've gone through recent healing time, we've gone through a transition time, and this community has been wise about that. The community I left previously did not have an interim minister, and they went through years of dissatisfaction and divisiveness before they landed again. And so just like in our own lives, just like for ourselves and our own relationships, when things get a little messy, we can try to close the door of our hearts. We can try to sweep it under the rug and pretend like it's not there. But you know what? That's going to come back, right? <laughs> it's like putting the beach ball underneath the water and trying to submerge it. <laughs> but instead, this community was wise to bring in Reverend Denise Schelling to usher through six months of interim ministry. And, and I feel very much like we've moved through that healing phase, we've moved through that transition phase, we've cleansed the property, the trauma of Carol Ruth Knox having, having been killed at the end of her ministry, some of you don't know that. Um, that, that trauma that lived here is gone, thanks to some help from the High Priestess of Bali. <laughs> And so this is, we are in that place of we are that seed that's come to be rooted. It's we're that seed that came to be healed again. And now we're busting through. There's a new birth. There's a new era that is upon us. And it's an exciting time. So let's hear from Reverend Denise Schellink, who was here as our interim minister. Hello, my beautiful friends at Unity of Walnut Creek. I'm Reverend Denise Schellink. For those that don't know, I am so blessed to be part of this rich spiritual community. I was able to be the transitional minister after Reverend David MacArthur, and then after you hired Reverend Kristen, who you have now. And so I'm just sending you my rich blessings to each and every one of you. So happy to be part of this 70th anniversary celebration and 50 years at that beautiful, holy, and sacred site that you're on there. So I know that you will have a fabulous celebration today because you are party people. I'm grateful to be invited. Wish I could have been there with you. I send my love and care and joy to each and every one of you and know that you really are fulfilling Unity Worldwide Ministries vision of a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of a shared spiritual awakening. Thank you for doing your part. Happy anniversary, and God bless each and every one of you. I love you.
So as Denise mentioned, that we are really embodying that vision that Unity Worldwide Ministries has put out of a spiritually awakened world. That we are a part of that greater vision, that greater movement, that the roots go that deep and the wings go that wide. That we are a part of, of raising up the consciousness on this entire planet and that often talked about critical mass is us. <laughs> Right? That tips the scales to that place of awakening, of the seed bursting open, of, of the growth and the thriving that is meant to be. And so we created this space that is fertile soil for that kind of liftoff, that kind of flight. Reverend Culliver talked about um, how we are on the cutting edge. And so let's hear a little bit about her time with us on this last video. I want to thank you for inviting me to celebrate uh, the birthday of Unity Center of Walnut Creek with you. When uh, we think of birthdays, we generally think of the experience of uh, wishing for uh, get, providing a wish or, or the individual providing a wish uh, for what they want to experience in their future. And so as I think about what I would like to uh, share with you is my wish for your future. I'd like to go back to uh, your history and it's something that uh, to me was very valuable as a unity ministry and that is you always stayed on the cutting edge. The cutting edge of spirituality, the cutting edge of myst mysticism, the, the cutting edge of science, the cutting edge of music. You always were a place in which people could come to get their answers questioned. <laughs> <laughs> what people knew went beyond their history and what people knew. I would like to uh, see in remembering in remembering the uh, all of those uh, people on the cutting edge, like Deepak Chopra, like uh, Wayne Dyer, like uh, Marianne Williamson, I would like to see uh, the people that are at the cutting edge today um, find their way to the platform of Unity Center of Walnut Creek and uh, to share uh, to share that ability to stretch, to share that ability to go beyond uh, what we already know, what we have already answered for ourselves, and uh, to create a, a new paradigm, a new paradigm for what is happening in our country, uh, in our ministries, and in the world. Thank you for being on the planet today. Prophetic, huh, David? <laughs> so we've just launched four initiatives at this in our community recently, and, and one of the ones that seems to be leading the way is that this is the go-to place, at least in the East Bay, if not all of the Bay Area, for spiritual, spirituality, for spiritual teachings, for events, for concerts, that it's on everybody's lips and mind and heart that is on this kind of spiritual journey, that they know Unity of Walnut Creek, they know 1871 Geary because they have been here so many times and all their friends are always talking about the next class or event or concert, the things that are happening that are on that cutting edge. So um, thanks to that message that is so timely for this wings, this time of wings, you know, this time of opening, of flying, of being all that we can be, the all that we've come to be. We're ready, aren't we? Are you ready? We're ready to take flight. We're there. We're poised at that place, and we can always remember how to come back, how to come back and touch down, just like the birds do, touch down, get a little nourishment, then fly again, you know? And so trusting ourselves, trusting our spirit to follow that lead where it takes us, when it's time to restabilize, to come and reconnect with our family, and when it's time to go out into the world as individuals, as small groups, as an entire community, to make a difference on this planet. I know we're already doing it, but it feels like the energy is ramping up. Do you feel that? 
Yeah, it's, the time is now. We are on that edge, quite literally on that edge that Colifer is talking about, and it's time to, to fly. So let's do it. Let's, let's deepen with our roots. Let's acknowledge our roots, and let's spread our wings and baby fly. <laughs> Thank you guys should also.